As you're studying for your pilot certification, you'll often see illustrations like these. But what the heck are they? This diagram, created by the FAA, can be found on their website pages that deal with UAS operations. It was intended to simplify a complex idea, but many just find it confusing, even after years of familiarity with drone operations. But perhaps that issue arises from trying to depict in two dimensions something that is very much a three-dimensional concept. So let's see if we can't break this down better using visualizations. Here is an ordinary sectional chart, something all pilots become familiar with. These rings indicate airspace restrictions relating to this Class B airport. Right now, we're seeing it like we would if it were laid out on a table. But let's tilt our view and see what the real-world application might look like. The first ring extends approximately 8 miles in radius from the airport and, according to this chart, rises up to 7,000 feet above ground level, or AGL. Seeing it shown here in 3D on an actual map already makes more sense than an abstract cylinder. So what's with the upside-down cake we always see in diagrams? Well, that starts with the next ring, also depicted on the sectional chart, but it actually begins at 2,000 feet above ground level, rises up to 7,000 feet, and extends approximately 16 miles from the airport. Catching on yet? Then you've probably already guessed that it means this third ring starts above all of that, beginning at 4,000 feet, rising up to 7,000 feet, and extending approximately 22 miles from the airport. So there you have it, a much more intelligible way of representing how airspace classifications work. Using this visualization, we can now see that the purpose for these concentric rings is to provide protected airspace for large aircraft on approach to or taking off from airport runways. While this covers the main idea, it's useful to understand that these things can also get pretty complicated in the real world, often overlapping or requiring modified boundaries for terrain and other considerations. You should also be aware how each of the classes differ from one another. When you see Class C airports on the map, you can expect to only be dealing with the first two rings like we discussed with Class B, but not requiring the third tier. In similar succession, Class D is only going to be the first cylinder. Class E is unique in that it can either refer to controlled airspace around certain airports or be general airspace above 1200 feet AGL. So that just leaves Class A and Class G. Class A is the simplest of all classes because it's just everything 18,000 feet above mean sea level, or MSL. So what is Class G? Well, that's basically just everything else. Though for you, a small UAS operator, that will typically only apply to anything 400 feet above ground level. Unless you've obtained a waiver, or you are navigating over top a tall structure that isn't already inside an airspace restriction. Hopefully this helps you as you study for your Part 107 exam. For some of us here at RMUS, seeing it in 3D space made a huge difference. Speaking of test prep, we have created a series of on-demand training videos to help you learn the key concepts included in the Part 107 exam. We also offer in-person or virtual training as well. Those and other training videos are available by signing up on the RMUS Hub. Use the link in the video description to get started. As always, stay tuned to this channel for more informational videos on drones and robotics.